A patient with chronic alcohol abuse is admitted with liver failure. You closely monitor the patient's blood pressure because of which change that is associated with the liver failure? A hypobuminemia. B. Increased capillary permeability. C. Abnormal peripheral recitulation. D. Excess renin release from the kidneys. Question 1 Answer. A hypobuminemia. Question 1 Explanation. Blood pressure decreases as the body is unable to maintain normal oncotic pressure with liver failure, so patients with liver failure require close blood pressure monitoring. Increased capillary permeability, abnormal peripheral visitilation, and excess renin released from the kidneys aren't direct ramifications of liver failure. Question 2. You're assessing the stoma of a patient with a healthy, well-healed colostomy. You expect the stoma to appear. A. Pale, pink and moist. B. Red and moist. C. Dark or purple colored. D. Dry and black. Question to answer. B. Red and moist. Question to explanation. Good circulation causes tissues to be moist and red, so a healthy, well-heeled stoma appears red and moist. Question 3. You're caring for a patient with a sigmoid colostomy. The stool from this colostomy is A. Formed. B. Semicillid. C. Semi-liquid. D. Watery. Question 3. Answer. A formed question 3. Explanation. A colostomy in the sigmoid colon produces a solid, formed stool. Question 4. You're advising a 21 years. O. With a colostomy who reports problems with flatus. What food should you recommend? A. Peas. B. Cabbage. C. Broccoli. D. Yogurt. Question 4 Answer. D. Yogurt Question 4 Explanation. High fiber foods stimulate peristalsis, and a result, flatus. Yogurt reduces gas formation. Question 5. You have to teach ostomy self-care to a patient with a colostomy. You tell the patient to measure and cut the wafer, a. to the exact size of the stoma. b. about 1 16th larger than the stoma. c. about 1 8th larger than the stoma. D. About one fourth larger than the stoma. Question 5. Answer. B. About one sixteenth larger than the stoma. Question 5. Explanation. A proper fit protects the skin but doesn't impair circulation. A one sixteenth should be cut. Question 6. You're performing an abdominal assessment on Brand who is 52 years. O. In which order do you proceed? A. Observation, percussion, palpation, auscultation. B. Observation, auscultation, percussion, palpation. C. Percussion, palpation, auscultation, observation. D. Palpation, percussion, observation, auscultation. Question 6 Answer. B. Observation, auscultation, percussion, palpation. Question 6 Explanation. Observation, auscultation, percussion, palpation. Question 7. You're doing preoperative teaching with Gertrude who has ulcerative colitis who needs surgery to create an ileonal reservoir. Which information do you include? A. A reservoir is created that exits through the abdominal wall. B. A second surgery is required 12 months after the first surgery. C. A permanent ileostomy is created. D. The surgery occurs in two stages. Question 7 Answer. D. The surgery occurs in two stages. Question 7 Explanation. An ileonal reservoir is created in two stages. The two surgeries are about two to three months apart. First, diseased intestines are removed and a temporary loop ileostomy is created. Second, the loop ileostomy is closed and stool goes to the reservoir and out through the anus. Question 8. You're caring for Karen who has just had ileostomy surgery. During the first 24 hours post-op, how much drainage can you expect from the ileostomy? A. 100 milliliters. B. 500 milliliters. C. 1,500 milliliters. D. 5,000 milliliters. Question 8 Answer. C. 1500 milliliters. Question 8 Explanation. 
the large intestine absorbs large amounts of water so the initial output from the ileostomy may be as much as 1,500 to 2,000 milliliters slash 24 hours. Gradually, the small intestine absorbs more fluid and the output decreases. Question 9. You're preparing a teaching plan for a 27 years. O. Name Jeff who underwent surgery to close a temporary ileostomy. Which nutritional guideline do you include in this plan? A. There is no need to change eating habits. B. Eat six small meals a day. C. Eat the largest meal in the evening. D. Restrict fluid intake. Question 9 Answer. B. Eat six small meals a day. Question 9 Explanation. To avoid overloading the small intestine, encourage the patient to eat six small, regularly spaced meals. Question 10. Arthur has a family history of colon cancer and is scheduled to have a sigmoidoscopy. He is crying as he tells you, I know that I have colon cancer, too. Which response is most therapeutic? A. I know just how you feel. B. You seem upset. C. Oh, don't worry about it, everything will be just fine. D. Why do you think you have cancer? Question 10 Answer. B. You seem upset. Question 10 Explanation Making observations about what you see or hear is a useful therapeutic technique. This way, you acknowledge that you are interested in what the patient is saying and feeling. Question 11 You're caring for Beth who underwent a Bill Roth II procedure, surgical removal of the pylorus and duodenum, for treatment of a peptic ulcer. Which findings suggest that the patient is developing dumping syndrome? A complication associated with this procedure. A flushed, dry skin. B. Headache and bradycardia. C. Dizziness and sweating. D. Dyspnea and chest pain. Question 11 Answer. C. Dizziness and sweating. Question 11 Explanation. After a Bill Roth II procedure, a large amount of hypertonic fluid enters the intestine. This causes extracellular fluid to move rapidly into the bowel reducing circulating blood volume and producing vasomotor symptoms. Vasomotor symptoms produced by dumping syndrome include dizziness and sweating, tachycardia, syncope, pallor, and palpitations. Question 12. You're developing the plan of care for a patient experiencing dumping syndrome after a Bill Roth II procedure. Which dietary instructions do you include? A. Omit fluids with meals. B. Increase carbohydrate intake. C. Decrease protein intake. D. Decrease fat intake. Question 12 Answer. A. Omit fluids with meals. Question 12 Explanation. Gastric emptying time can be delayed by omitting fluids from your patient's meal. A diet low in carbs and high in fat and protein is recommended to treat dumping syndrome. Question 13. You're caring for Lewis, a 67 years. O. Patient with liver cirrhosis who developed ascites and requires paracentesis. Relief of which symptom indicated that the paracentesis was effective? A. Pruritus. B. Dyspnea. C. Jaundice. D. Peripheral neuropathy. Question 13 Answer. B. Dyspnea. Question 13 Explanation. Ascites puts pressure on the diaphragm. Paracentesis is done to remove fluid and reducing pressure on the diaphragm. The goal is to improve the patient's breathing. The others are signs of cirrhosis that aren't relieved by paracentesis. Question 14. You're caring for Jane, a 57 years. O. Patient with liver cirrhosis who developed ascites and requires paracentesis. Before her paracentesis, you instruct her to AMD her bladder. B. Lysupine in bed. C. Remain NPO for 4 hours. D. Clean her bowels with an enema. Question 14 Answer. A. Empty her bladder. Question 14 Explanation. A full bladder can interfere with paracentesis and be punctured inadvertently. Question 15. After abdominal surgery, your patient has a severe coughing episode that causes wound evisceration. In addition to calling the doctor, which intervention is most appropriate? A. Irrigate the wound and organs with betadine. B. Cover the wound with a saline-soaked sterile dressing. C. Apply a dry sterile dressing and binder.
de-push the organs back and cover with moist sterile dressings. Question 15 Answer. B. Cover the wound with a saline soaked sterile dressing. Question 15 Explanation. Cover the organs with a sterile, non-adherent dressing moistened with normal saline. Do this to prevent infection and to keep the organs from drying out. Question 16. You're caring for Betty with liver cirrhosis. Which of the following assessment findings leads you to suspect hepatic encephalopathy in her? A. Asterixis. B. Kvostik sign. C. Trousseau's sign. D. Hepatojugular reflex. Question 16 Answer. A. Asterixis. Question 16 Explanation. Asterixis is an early neurologic sign of hepatic encephalopathy elicited by asking the patient to hold her arm stretched out. Asterixis is present if the hands rapidly extend and flex. Question 17. You are developing a care plan on Sally, a 67 years dotto. Patient with hepatic encephalopathy. Which of the following do you include? A. Administering a lactulose enema as ordered. B. Encouraging a protein-rich diet. C. Administering sedatives, as necessary. D. Encouraging ambulation at least four times a day. Question 17 Answer. Administering a lactulose enema as ordered. Question 17 Explanation. You may administer the laxative lactulose to reduce ammonia levels in the colon. Question 18. You have a patient with achalasia, incomplete muscle relaxation of the GI tract, especially sphincter muscles. Which medications do you anticipate to administer? A. Isosaw or bidinitrate, isordil. B. Digoxin, linoxin. C. Captopril, capotin. D. Propranolol, indril. Question 18 Answer, A. Isosaw or bidinitrate, isordil. Question 18 Explanation, Achalasia is characterized by incomplete relaxation of the lay, dilation of the lower esophagus and a lack of esophageal peristalsis. Because nitrates relax the lower esophageal sphincter, expect to give isordal orally or sublingually. Question 19. The student nurse is preparing a teaching care plan to help improve nutrition in a patient with achalasia. You include which of the following? A. Swallow foods while leaning forward. B. Omit fluids at meal times. C. Eat meals sitting upright. D. Avoid soft and semi-soft foods. Question 19 Answer. C. Eat meals sitting upright. Question 19 Explanation. Eating in the upright position aids in emptying the esophagus. Doing the opposite of the other three also may be helpful. Question 20. Brittany, a 20 years dotto. Student is admitted with acute pancreatitis. Which laboratory findings do you expect to be abnormal for this patient? A. Serum creatinine and bun. B. Alanine aminotransferase, ALT, and aspartate aminotransferase, AST. C. Serum amylase and lipase. D. Cardiac enzymes. Question 20 Answer. C. Serum amylase and lipase. Question 20 Explanation. Pancreatitis involves activation of pancreatic enzymes, such as amylase and lipase. These levels are elevated in a patient with acute pancreatitis. Question 21. A patient with Crohn's disease is admitted after four days of diarrhea. Which of the following urine-specific gravity values do you expect to find in this patient? A. 1.005 B. 1.011 C. 1.020 D. 1.030 Question 21 Answer D1.030 Question 21 Explanation The normal range of specific gravity of urine is 1.010 to 1.025, a value of 1.030 may be seen with dehydration. Question 22 Your goal is to minimize David's risk of complications after a hernia. You instruct the patient to A. Avoid the use of pain medication. B. Cough and deep breathe Q2H. C. Splint the incision if he can't avoid sneezing or coughing. D. Apply heat to scrotal swelling. Question 22 Answer. C. Splint the incision if he can't avoid sneezing or coughing. Question 22 Explanation. T. 
teach the PT to avoid activities that increase intra-abdominal pressure such as coughing, sneezing, or straining with a bowel movement. Question 23, Janice is waiting for discharge instructions after her hernia. Which of the following instructions do you include? A. Eat a low-fiber diet. B. Resume heavy lifting in two weeks. C. Lose weight, if obese. D. Resume sexual activity once discomfort is gone. Question 23 Answer. C. Lose weight, if obese. Question 23 Explanation. Because obesity weakens the abdominal muscles, advise weight loss for the patient who has had a hernia repair. Question 24 Develop a teaching care plan for Angie who is about to undergo a liver biopsy. Which of the following points do you include? A. You'll need to lie on your stomach during the test. B. You'll need to lie on your right side after the test. C. During the biopsy you'll be asked to exhale deeply and hold it. D. The biopsy is performed under general anesthesia. Question 24 Answer. B. You'll need to lie on your right side after the test. Question 24 Explanation. After a liver biopsy, the patient is placed on the right side to compress the liver and to reduce the risk of bleeding or bile leakage. Question 25. Stephen is a 62 years. O. Patient that has had a liver biopsy. Which of the following groups of signs alert you to a possible pneumotrax? A. Dyspnea and reduced or absent breath sounds over the right lung. B. Tachycardia, hypotension, and cool, clammy skin. C. Fever, rebound tenderness, and abdominal rigidity. D. Redness, warmth, and drainage at the biopsy site. Question 25 Answer. A dyspnea and reduced or absent breath sounds over the right lung. Question 25 Explanation. Signs and symptoms of pneumotrax include dyspnea and decreased or absent breath sounds over the affected lung, right lung. Question 26. Michael, a 42 years. O. Man is admitted to the med surg floor with a diagnosis of acute pancreatitis. His BP is 136.76, pulse 96, RISPs 22 and TEMP 101. His past history includes hyperlipidemia and alcohol abuse. The doctor prescribes an ang tube. Before inserting the tube, you explain the purpose to patient. Which of the following is a most accurate explanation? A. It empties the stomach of fluids and gas. B. It prevents spasms at the sphincter of Audi. C. It prevents air from forming in the small intestine and large intestine. D. It removes bile from the gallbladder. Question 26 Answer. A. It empties the stomach of fluids and gas. Question 26 Explanation. A Nang tube is inserted into the patient's stomach to drain fluid and gas. Question 27. Jason, a 22 years. O. Accident victim, requires an Nang tube for feeding. What should you immediately do after inserting an Nang tube for liquid enteral feedings? A. Aspirate for gastric secretions with a syringe. B. Begin feeding slowly to prevent cramping. C. Get an X-ray of the tip of the tube within 24 hours. D. Clamp off the tube until the feedings begin. Question 27 Answer. A. Aspirate for gastric secretions with a syringe. Question 27 Explanation. Aspirating the stomach contents confirms correct placement. If an X-ray is ordered, it should be done immediately not in 24 hours. Question 28. Stephanie, a 28 years. O. Accident victim, requires TPN. The rationale for TPN is to provide, a. Necessary fluids and electrolytes to the body. b. Complete nutrition by the IV route. c. Tube feedings for nutritional supplementation. d. Dietary supplementation with liquid protein given between meals. Question 28 Answer, B. Complete nutrition by the IV route. Question 28 Explanation, TPN is given IV to provide all the nutrients your patient needs. TPN isn't a tube feeding nor is it a liquid dietary supplement. Question 29, Type A chronic gastritis can be distinguished from type B by its ability to, A. Cause atrophy of the parietal cells. B. Affect only the antrum of the stomach. 
C. Thin the lining of the stomach walls. D. Decrease gastric secretions. Question 29 Answer. A cause atrophy of the parietal cells. Question 29 Explanation. Type A causes changes in parietal cells. Question 30. Matt is a 49 years. O. With a hiatal hernia that you are about to counsel. Healthcare counseling for Matt should include which of the following instructions? A. Restrict intake of high carbohydrate foods. B. Increase fluid intake with meals. C. Increase fat intake. D. Eat three regular meals a day. Question 30 Answer. B. Increase fluid intake with meals. Question 30 Explanation. Increasing fluids helps empty the stomach. A high carb diet isn't restricted and fat intake shouldn't be increased. Question 31. Jared is experiencing an acute episode of ulcerative colitis. Which is priority for this patient? A. Replace lost fluid and sodium. B. Monitor for increased serum glucose level from steroid therapy. C. Restrict the dietary intake of foods high in potassium. D. Note any change in the color and consistency of stools. Question 31 Answer. A replace lost fluid and sodium question 31 explanation diarrhea D T an acute episode of ulcerative colitis leads to fluid and electrolyte losses so fluid replacement takes priority question 32 a 29 years dotto patient has an acute episode of ulcerative colitis what diagnostic test confirms this diagnosis a barium swallow B. Stool examination. C. Gastric analysis. D. Sigmoidoscopy. Question 32 Answer. D. Sigmoidoscopy. Question 32 Explanation. Sigmoidoscopy allows direct observation of the colon mucosa for changes, and if needed, biopsy. Question 33 Eleanor, a 62 years. O. Woman with diverticulosis is your patient. Which interventions would you expect to include in her care? A. Low fiber diet and fluid restrictions. B. Total parenteral nutrition and bed rest. C. High fiber diet and administration of psyllium. D. Administration of analgesics and antacids. Question 33 Answer. C. High fiber diet and administration of psyllium. Question 33 Explanation. She needs a high fiber diet and a psyllium, bulk laxative, to promote normal soft stools. Question 34. Regina is a 46 years. O. Woman with ulcerative colitis. You expect her stools to look like A. Watery and frothy. B. Bloody and mucus. C. Firm and well formed. D. Alternating constipation and diarrhea. Question 34 Answer. B. Bloody and mucus. Question 34 Explanation. Stools from ulcerative colitis are often bloody and contain mucus. Question 35. Donald is a 61 years. O. Man with diverticulitis. Diverticulitis is characterized by a. Periodic rectal hemorrhage. b. Hypertension and tachycardia. c. Vomiting and elevated temperature. d. Crampy and lower left quadrant pain and low grade fever. Question 35 Answer. D. Crampy and lower left quadrant pain and low grade fever. Question 35 Explanation. One sign of acute diverticulitis is crampy lower left quadrant pain. A low grade fever is another common sign. Question 36. Brenda, a 36 years. O. Patient is on your floor with acute pancreatitis. Treatment for her includes A. Continuous peritoneal lavage. B. Regular diet with increased fat. C. Nutritional support with TPN. D. Insertion of a T tube to drain the pancreas. Question 36 Answer. C. Nutritional support with TPN. Question 36 Explanation. With acute pancreatitis, you need to rest the GI tract by TPN as nutritional support. Question 37. Glenda has cholidiasis, gallstones. You expect her to complain of A. Pain in the right upper quadrant, radiating to the shoulder. B. Pain in the right lower quadrant, with rebound tenderness. C. Pain in the left upper quadrant, with shortness of breath. D. Pain in the left lower quadrant, with mild cramping. Question 37 Answer. 
a pain in the right upper quadrant, radiating to the shoulder question 37 explanation. The gallbladder is located in the ruch and a frequent sign of gallstones is pain radiating to the shoulder. Question 38. After an abdominal resection for colon cancer, Madeline returns to her room with a Jackson Pratt drain in place. The purpose of the drain is to a. Irrigate the incision with a saline solution. b. Prevent bacterial infection of the incision. c. Measure the amount of fluid lost after surgery. D. Prevent accumulation of drainage in the wound. Question 38 Answer. D. Prevent accumulation of drainage in the wound. Question 38 Explanation. A Jackson Pratt drain promotes wound healing by allowing fluid to escape from the wound. Question 39. Anthony, a 60 years. O. Patient, has just undergone a bowel resection with a colostomy. During the first 24 hours, which of the following observations about the stoma should you report to the doctor? A. Pink color. B. Light edema. C. Small amount of oozing. D. Trickles of bright red blood. Question 39 Answer. D. Trickles of bright red blood. Question 39 Explanation. After creation of a colostomy, expect to see a stoma that is pink, slightly edematous, with some oozing. Bright red blood, regardless of amount indicates bleeding and should be reported to the doctor. Question 40. You're teaching Anthony how to use his new colostomy. How much skin should remain exposed between the stoma and the ring of the appliance? A. 1 16th. B. 1 4th dot. C. 1 half. D. 1. Question 40 answer. A 1 16th question 40 explanation. Only a small amount of skin should be exposed and more than 1 16th of skin allows the excretement to irritate the skin. Question 41, Claire, a 33 years. O, is on your floor with a possible bowel obstruction. Which intervention is priority for her? A. Obtain daily weights. B. Measure abdominal girth. C. Keep strict intake and output. D. Encourage her to increase fluids. Question 41 Answer, B. Measure Abdominal Girth Question 41 Explanation, Measuring Abdominal Girth provides quantitative information about increases or decreases in the amount of distension. Question 42, Your patient has a GI tract that is functioning, but has the inability to swallow foods. Which is the preferred method of feeding for your patient? A. TPN B. PPN C. Ang feeding. D. Oral liquid supplements. Question 42 answer. C. Ang feeding. Question 42 explanation. Because the GI tract is functioning, feeding methods involve the enteral route which bypasses the mouth but allows for a major portion of the GI tract to be used. Question 43. Your patient is complaining of abdominal pain during assessment. What is your priority? A. Auscultate to determine changes in bowel sounds. B. Observe the contour of the abdomen. C. Palpate the abdomen for a mass. D. Percuss the abdomen to determine if fluid is present. Question 43 Answer. B. Observe the contour of the abdomen. Question 43 Explanation. The first step in assessing the abdomen is to observe its shape and contour, then auscultate, palpate, and then percuss. Question 44. Before bowel surgery, Lee is to administer enemas until clear. During administration, he complains of intestinal cramps. What do you do next? A. Discontinue the procedure. B. Lower the height of the enema container. C. Complete the procedure as quickly as possible. D. Continue administration of the enema as ordered without making any adjustments. Question 44 Answer be lower the height of the enema container question 44 explanation lowering the height decreases the amount of flow allowing him to tolerate more fluid question 45 Leanne is receiving pancreas viacase for chronic pancreatitis which observation best indicates the treatment is effective a there is no skin breakdown b her appetite improves c she loses more than 10 pounds D. Stools are less fatty and decreased in frequency. Question 45 Answer. D. Stools are less fatty and decreased in frequency. Question 45 Explanation. 
Pancreolpase provides the exocrine pancreatic enzyme necessary for proper protein, fat, and carb digestion. With increased fat digestion and absorption, stools become less frequent and normal in appearance. Question 46. Ralph has a history of alcohol abuse and has acute pancreatitis. Which lab value is most likely to be elevated? A. Calcium. B. Glucose. C. Magnesium. D. Potassium. Question 46. Answer. B. Glucose. Question 46. Explanation. Glucose level increases and diabetes mellitus may result. D. T. The pancreatic damage to the islets of Langerhans. Question 47. Anna is 45 years. O. Oh, and has a bleeding ulcer. Despite multiple blood transfusions, her HGB is 7.5 grams slash DL and HCT is 27%. Her doctor determines that surgical intervention is necessary and she undergoes partial gastrectomy. Postoperative nursing care includes A. Giving pain medication Q6H B. Flushing the ink tube with sterile water C. Positioning her in high Fowler's position D. Keeping her NPO until the return of peristalsis. Question 47 Answer. D. Keeping her NPO until the return of peristalsis. Question 47 Explanation. After surgery, she remains NPO until peristaltic activity returns. This decreases the risk for abdominal distension and obstruction. Question 48 City. A 66 years. O. Patient underwent a colostomy for ruptured diverticulum. She did well during the surgery and returned to your med surg floor in stable condition. You assess her colostomy two days after surgery. Which finding do you report to the doctor? A blanched stoma. B. Edematous stoma. C. Reddish pink stoma. D. Brownish black stoma. Question 48 Answer. D. Brownish black stoma. Question 48 Explanation. A brownish black color indicates lack of blood flow and maybe necrosis. Question 49. Sharon has cirrhosis of the liver and develops ascites. What intervention is necessary to decrease the excessive accumulation of serous fluid in her peritoneal cavity? A. Restrict fluids. B. Encourage ambulation. C. Increase sodium in the diet. D. Give antacids as prescribed. Question 49. Answer. A. Restrict fluids. Question 49. Explanation. Restricting fluids decrease the amount of body fluid and the accumulation of fluid in the peritoneal space. Question 50. Katrina is diagnosed with lactose intolerance. To avoid complications with lack of calcium in the diet, which food should be included in the diet? A. Fruit. B. Whole grains. C. Milk and cheese products. D. Dark green, leafy vegetables. Question 50. Answer. D. Dark green. Leafy vegetables question 50 explanation. Dark green, leafy vegetables are rich in calcium.